Welcome to the Lorraine Public Library Systems tutorial on Tumble Books. Tumble Books is an e-library resource for families with children in preschool up to sixth grade. Tumble Books offers free talking books, read-alongs, and e-books on a variety of different topics. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to access the Tumble Book Library for free through the Lorraine Public Library Systems homepage, how to browse for books, and I'm going to highlight some of TumbleBook's unique characteristics. So to get started, you will need to go to the Lorraine Public Library Systems homepage, which is lorrainepubliclibrary.org. Again, as you can see in my address bar, it's lorrainepubliclibrary.org. From our homepage, you will need to go to our e-library. So you're going to look for the e-library button. Mine is red right here on my screen, and simply click that. The e-library is all of the digital resources that you can access for free with your library card. Most of these resources you can access for the comfort of your own home. If you don't have a library card with us, there is an option that you can click here to apply for an e-card. If you do have a library card with us, your standard library card will give you access to all of these resources. All of our resources are in alphabetical order, so I encourage you to check them out, and I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the T's. So right here is our Tumble Book Library. This is a resource that was provided uh, to us during our temporary closure. So in order to access it, all you need to do is click on the link. That will take you directly to the Tumble Book Library. I do want to point out that this is a subscription-based service, so if you simply were to Google Tumble Book Library and try to log on that way, there would be a fee in order for you to access it. So to get it for free, you do have to go through the Lorraine Public Library's homepage in order to access this. So you can see it provides a variety of different options. So the storybooks are animated videos and animated read-alouds, and we're going to take a look at those in a moment. Those are ideal for preschoolers, for kindergartners, and even maybe first graders. Then you would move along to the read-alongs, and I'll kind of click on that tab. So our read-alongs are kind of our early readers. Those are the books that are formatted for children that have a lot of the high-frequency insight words as they're learning to become independent readers. Again, it has a built-in narration that's going to highlight sentences as they're being read aloud. There's also some beginning-level chapter books for readers as well. Then you would graduate to the ebooks. The ebooks are going to be chapter books that are the primary intended use would be um, slightly older students, so anywhere from I would say third, fourth, fifth, and a few for even sixth grade as well. Again, you can see there's a variety of different resources. One of the advantage about tumble books, especially if you happen to be an educator or maybe you're facilitating a book club or you have um, some children at home and you want your child to read um, the same book as maybe a friend is that with tumble books you can access these books without any licensing limits so that the same person or multiple people rather can read the same book simultaneously so this would be a really good resource for educators if you wanted to sign a class of specific book we will take a look at most of these features in a little bit more detail momentarily. You can see that they also offer some graphic novels. With that said as librarian, I will say that they use the graphic novel format or definition a little bit more loosely than what I would or what your child may. There's also a variety of nonfiction books. A lot of these you can see are broken down into categories such as animals, histories, geography, which you can explore. They also have videos which are primarily, or actually they all are, are National Geographic. And with anything, they do the different categories, but with any of these um, formats, you can click the View All Titles, and that will give you a listing. So you can view them by cover, which I find appealing as a visual learner, but you can also choose to view by detail. And if you view anything by detail, whether it's videos or the books, you'll see that you will get not only 
the title but a brief summary of it and you'll get to see the video you'll get it added to favorites a playlist or do the book report on it so it provides different features they also have um, books in multiple languages such as um, Spanish and French they have the puzzles and games to have here so um, it, most of the games up here are the sentence games and a sentence game they're going to show you pictures from a book and your child would read the sentence and then choose the picture that matches the sentence or the description and then they also have memory games and they also have a game in Spanish as well. If we backtrack over to the playlist, a playlist allows you to put multiple books together in a certain sequence. So if you're doing a story time, it would allow you to play multiple titles, one right after the other, or say that you're um, at home during virtual learning with your family and you want to provide them with an option that maybe isn't television, you could go ahead and maybe put several books together in a playlist to keep people occupied, maybe if you're on a conference call or, or such. So when we get into looking at the storybooks and read-alongs, I'm also going to show you where you can go to view the um, time that each one of those read-alouds would take. But those are just a few of the features. Something else to kind of point out with the language up here, there is the um, English, but you can see that this is also available in Spanish and French, which would mean that it changes the language on the entire user interface either to um, French or to Spanish. So if we go back to storybooks, there's a few things up here. There's always like the home. Um, any of these books you can kind of start as a favorite so you can keep a list of all of your favorite books. We've discussed playlists. You can also go to Common Core and you can click on um, specific sections of this uh, for reading, for mathematics, counting, and it will go ahead and help link you to specific books related to those sections. So that's good information to know. Um, this, the How to Temple, would provide you with um, some more detailed instructions. So if we go back to our storybooks. So the storybook format includes both animated videos that are true to a story, and then read aloud books. So I'm going to show you an example of each. So Bailey by Harry Bliss, we'll go ahead and click on that. So you just click on any title that you're interested in. Again, what you'll see is a description of this. Um, you'll see the read online, which tells me that this is um, a read aloud versus the video. And down here, it always gives you the option of adding it to the favorites, and then it gives you book reports. So these are extension activities that you can do per grade. Um, it walks your child through different questions that they would answer, so it can help check for comprehension. Over here by the book details, it will tell you publisher, it will tell you Lexile information, and if there's any accelerated reader information, it will link to that as well. So if we were to do a read aloud, and I'm going to bring that up in a moment, it already has built-in narration, it has built-in animation, and it also automatically turns the pages. So if you're going to do screen sharing to do a virtual story time, I would actually recommend using either BookFlix or Hoopla because Tumble Books has so many built-in animations and you can't really turn those off, which we're going to see in a moment. Again, I think Tumble Books is a great resource that if you've kind of exhausted what's in BookFlix and or Hoopla, this would be another resource that you can turn to if you wanted to do virtual story times. Again, you would need to check with the publisher to make sure that you had those permissions, especially if you're going to be recording yourself. But with that said, Tumble Books provides more titles, and this is also a great resource for families to kind of use instead of maybe television. So let's go ahead and take a look at Bailey by Harry Bliss. So we're going to go ahead and do the read online. Once it loads, you'll get the option of playing. We'll turn our page. The early bird wakes Bailey up. So as you see, it will highlight the um, entire sentence as it reads it. One of the things I, I don't like about Tumble Books is the fact that it has this percentage red, 7%, 
which is often intermixed in with the text, so I find that to be confusing, and there's not a way to eliminate that. Over here on the side, there are different controls, so you can turn off the auto, and what that will do is it allows you to adjust when you want to turn the page, but even when you do that, because of the built-in animations, the illustrations will automatically disappear. You can also kind of turn off the volume if you wanted to, and then you'd be able to read the text out loud, and we'll do that for the next page. But again, it's a little hard to do that. Um, you kind of have to wait until these, you know, go away um, before you would be able to read it loud without that percentage obscuring part of the text. So we could go ahead and we could turn off auto. Early bird. And turn off our volume. So I'm going to let it rest for just a moment because what we're going to see is we'll be able to turn the page, but again, we see that our illustration disappeared. But we could turn the page, and then if we wanted to, we would be able to read it out loud. But again, if you're doing it as a storytelling and you want to point out those words, it would be hard for children to kind of be able to read along. So when you're ready to close out of a book, you can go ahead and simply tap the close button. The one thing I will say about this too is whenever you're opening something in Tumble Books, it tends to open it in a new browser. So that's something to be aware of. Now that was an example of a read aloud story. If we want to look at more of the video, we're going to scroll down. And I happen to know if I can find it. So this one here, Duck Grab It, is an example of one that is a video. Again, this one has a variety of other resources, so it has quizzes on it that would help with comprehension, um, lesson plans, you're able to add it to your playlist, and some of these will link back to those game section as well. So when we're ready to view this, again, we just tap on the cover, and it will load. And I was actually viewing this one earlier. So again, we can see there's the um, built-in narration. There's not really a way to turn that off. There are different settings. So what you can do is you can download it and you can also try the picture in the picture, which will make it down here as well. So we're gonna actually turn that off and then go ahead and play the video. So again, it will highlight the entire sentence as it reads it out loud. One of the advantages when we look at Book Flix and Hoopla, however, is it highlights words in real time, meaning that it highlights the precise word as that's being read aloud, which I think is a better uh, component for early, liter early literacy in emerging readers. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. Again, I think this is great to have a variety of different resources and titles. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close out of the video to go back to my main page. Again, this is a great resource, especially for educators. If you want to assign a class an entire book to read, this is a type of vendor that multiple students can read or access the same books without any limitations. That's something that we see with OverDrive. We have to purchase so many titles in OverDrive, and once those are all checked out, there's a wait list. With things like Hoopla and BookFlix and TumbleBooks, multiple students can be reading or ac accessing the same title simultaneously. So that's a, a big benefit, especially with so many people at home doing virtual learning. So if we were to take um, a look now maybe at a read-along, and I will say with the, the read-along stories, some of them do, in my opinion, kind of look a, a little dated. Um, so that might be something where it might be a harder sell for some students, but if we were to kind of maybe scroll through and we look at um, here, Hurry Freedom, and if we were ready, so this would deal with the Underground Railroad, if we were interested in go ahead and reading the story, we would again read it online, and again, this is going to go ahead and it's going to highlight those words for us. So it gives us different options as well. And in this one, it will allow us to bookmark it and it has the play button. How it all began. Emily and Matt couldn't believe it. 
so it will read it out loud. Again, when I'm done with the book, I can simply close out of that, and then we can move over to our ebooks. Now, what I've noticed with the ebooks is they're each formatted a little bit differently. So we're gonna take a look at uh, Because of Win Dixie, and then uh, Flora and uh, Useless. So if I bring up Because of Win Dixie, again, when I'm ready to read it, I just simply tap the read online, and you can see in this one, um, it's marked by chapters, we can turn the pages, we can bookmark it, there's text options as we're kind of reading it aloud, so I, I don't mind this format at all. However, when I go back to the main page, and then I go back to ebooks, now this is um, another title, but it's by the same author, and once we bring this up, and we go to read online, the format looks completely different. So rather than um, flipping left and right to turn pages, we're scrolling down. And in this format, there's actually multiple chapters. So there's chapter one, and then you kind of would read through this. You see this takes you to chapter five, and then once you get to chapter five, you would use the arrow to go then to the next section of chapters. I just feel feel that the layout is a little confusing for students that are used to um, an ebook format that looks a little bit more like a traditional book. So again, those are just kind of my own thoughts to it. Again, with Tumble Books, oftentimes it opens up in a new tab, so I can just close out of that tab to go back to the screen, and then I can use these buttons again to navigate to the various options or different formats. So again, the benefit to this is it provides more options for students to read at home, and that's always a benefit. I hope this tutorial was beneficial. If you have any questions, you can contact the Lorraine Public Library System by visiting our homepage, which is lorrainepubliclibrary.org. Again, that's lorrainepubliclibrary.org. From there, there's an Ask a Librarian option, and if you click on that, you'll be able to send us an email, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope everyone stays safe and well, and that we're able to see each other soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.